Good morning and welcome to Monday Morning Manna, our podcast here from Lighthouse. If you're new, um, my name is Ron. I'm one of the pastors here, and so welcome. Thank you for being here today. Hey, the question that I have for us to examine as we begin Proverbs chapter 24 is, who do you admire in life? Or maybe better yet, who do you pattern your life after? Well, let's pray and then we'll jump into our study. Lord, thank you for our time together today. What would we do without being able to seek you? Lord, and you have provided for us your word. All we have to do is open it up and seek uh, truth from it. it. It's truth that sets us free, Lord. It's the truth of your word. And, and so, Lord, it, it allows us to draw closer to you that we might know you more intimately. And as, Lord, you, you reached out, O oh God, so that we might know you and allowed us to know your Son. Uh, such a gift to know your Son. Not just knowing him, but knowing that because we know him, we have eternal life. Oh, Lord, such a great expectation. Wouldn't we want to prepare for the kingdom that is going to last for eternity? And so, Lord, do a little bit of that work today as we spend time in Proverbs 24. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. So if you're at a baseball game and the batter comes to bat and he stands there and he points to center field, who is that batter emulating? Well, he's saying, I'm going to do the same thing that a great baseball player by the name of Babe Ruth did. He pointed to center field, and then he smacked that home run to center field. Well, he's saying, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to maybe even do that greater than what Babe Ruth did. I don't know. But at least he's he's saying, I'm going to be like him, right? Or if you um, have someone and they have a silhouette on their basketball shoes of a, a person, a player that's that's jumping, and, the, and their legs are spread out, and their right hand, I think it's the right hand that has a basketball basketball in it, you know, and so who who is that that they're saying, hey, I want to be like this person, and of course, that's Michael Jordan. Um, Proverbs 24, why do I say that? Because Proverbs 24 is the contrast between, here's some characteristics, here's some things that you need to pay attention to about those who God refers to as evil, and then characteristics about those who God refers to as wise. So let's read Proverbs chapter 24, um, and maybe we're going to find out who we're pattering, pattering <laughs> our life, um, who we're pattering our life after. Please forgive me. So Proverbs chapter 24, verse 1. Be not envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them, for their hearts devise violence and their lips talk of trouble. So God is saying, be careful about being aroused by the traits or the possessions of people that devise violence. They're they're what I call division makers. They want to create problems. They want to create conflict. It's like, I don't want to be around those people. I don't even want to be part of them. Uh, But pay attention to them. They're they're not people that you want to emulate. They, They may be people that have strong personalities, but that doesn't mean that it's a personality that you want to emulate. You know, you got to be careful about people who devise plans to hurt other people. And often they do it without remorse. Um, those who constantly have to have drama around their lives. And, you know, I would refer to them as the three S's. First one would be schemers. People who plan underhanded things by the things that they say and how they say them and who they say them to. Um, And then the second one would be a scoffer. Well, a scoffer is someone who mocks or ridicules someone or something. And oftentimes to accomplish that, they use crass humor. And then, of course, the last S um, in our schemers, scoffers, is skeptics. Skeptics are those people who continually question or doubt, even with solid information, great um, resources, rational thinking, but yet 
Ah, oh, I can't believe that. I can't embrace that, you know. And so they cause doubt and they spread doubt into people's minds. Um, and, and so do you know schemers, scoffers, skeptics? Do you have uh, some of those your friends or some of those people, people that you admire and you're pursuing after? Well, might I encourage you to rethink that? Um, let's look at the contrast between the evil person and then the wise person as we look at verse 3 in Proverbs 24. By wisdom, a house is built, a life is built. Um, and by understanding, it is established. It's got direction. It's got purpose. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. You know, um, I wonder, you know, when Solomon wrote this, if what he was thinking about was all the experiences of his life and the things that were part of his life that were valuable because they were from God and, and where God moved and, and he did particular things, resources, providing resources for him um, for later things to be able to refer back to. You know, there was a time when, when God did this in my life or to, to remind us of the things that God has done. So I wonder if that's what he's speaking about there when he talks about by knowledge, the rooms are filled with precious and pleasant riches. Oh, I'm faithful to seek the Lord. Um, and, and so, um, it, it, interestingly enough, I think that um, people, they say, well, God doesn't exist. <laughs> Because they say, well, I can't see him. You know, if I can't see him, then I'm not going to believe in him. Um, you know, well, let's well, ha hold on just a minute. If we, if we have a painting, then we know that that didn't just happen out of nothing. No, there was a painter or more appropriately would be an artist that painted that painting, right? Um, well, it's the same thing. We have creation. And so it didn't just happen. Um, God, God says that, you know, it, it in essence, if, if you embrace the idea that, that that complexity of life happened by chance, that's absurdity. And, and we're saying no to God um, because we have a creation, we have a creator, and we have a profound creator. Um, and they say, well, I can't see him. Well, yeah, you can't see oxygen. You can't see wind. You can't see gravity. Um, you can't see heat. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that they don't exist, right? They, they're all part of the things of life. Um, just because you can't see God doesn't mean that he doesn't exist. If, you, if you're sincere about seeking the Lord, ask him to reveal himself to you. Trust him that he will, but be courageous, right? So wisdom tells us that we need to gather information, um, abundance of counselors. It says, um, a wise man is full of strength and a man of knowledge enhances his might. For by wise guidance, you can wage your war and in an abundance of counselors, there is victory. So wisdom says, man, gather great intel. Um, you know, the best intel that I know of is 66 books. It's contained in this one book called the Bible. Um, and that's, but that's also referred to as gathering the counsel of Scripture. Now, the counsel of the Lord is sought through prayer. It's prayer and meditation upon the word that you sought, the counsel of Scripture, um, but potentially also even fasting. Fasting doesn't make God work on our behalf. No, fasting says I'm going to deny myself that I might know more about who he is and, and what he would have of me. Um, other counselors would be gathering good facts about whatever it is that you need to make your decision with um, and being guarded about an emotional decision. Um, seek the counsel of godly people. And if you're married, talk to your spouse. Oh my goodness, I, I so wish there were times when I made a poor decision because I didn't counsel with my wife. Oh, she thinks differently than I do. I so appreciate that about her. Um, but I guess I had to learn that the hard way. Um, and then, of course, talk to experienced people, people that are in the industries of the things that you might be needing to know more about. Things to avoid, counsel to avoid, would be the counsel of the wicked. Uh, you, you see from verses 1 and 2, that's not a place where you want to go. I wouldn't go to fortune tellers. 
I wouldn't go to mediums. I wouldn't go to spiritualists. Um, and I wouldn't go to a biased counselor, people who may benefit from your decision. Hey, we're going to jump into um, Proverbs 24, verses 7 through 9 next week. So God bless you and thank you for joining me today.